thermal receptors. So now I want to be talking about the thermal receptors and uh, what what are they? So there are mainly basically two types. Uh, according to my lectures, they are rapid. Um, according to my lectures in university, they are rapid um, applications, but adaptations. The thermal receptors have rapid adaptations, but that's I believe so. That's totally wrong. They're gonna have slow um, adaptations, and uh, they're gonna have slow adaptations, and they're gonna be two types. One is gonna be a cold thermal receptor, and there's gonna be a hot uh, th thermal. A receptor and these cold thermal receptors is going to be from temperatures between uh, 10 Celsius and uh, 35 Celsius and a hot, hot one will be between the uh, temperatures of uh, 30 Celsius and 48 Celsius so yeah that's about it for that uh, what are more amount of receptor channels well uh, Receptors are going to be slow and uh, slowly adapting receptors. Um, they're going to be slowly, like I said, they're going to be slowly adapting. And if the skin, if the skin temperature rises to damaging levels, the, wo the warm receptors become inactive. Thus, wo warm receptors do not have any uh, type of. So basically, uh, if, and like I said over there, there are limits. So if the wo warm receptors. Um, are experienced to heat above uh, heat uh, heat above the level 45 Celsius then um, the warm receptors become uh, warm receptors become inactive and uh, these are going to be then what's going to be activated is going to be polymodal polymodal uh, Poly polymodal uh, nausea receptors and uh, which are going to be basically uh, uh, basically pain receptors essentially um, and the same thing applies with the extremely uh, freezing conditions another thing I want to talk about is going to be TRP channels otherwise known as the transmembrane sorry Transition, uh, transient receptor, transient receptor uh, potential. Um, in the of the vaniloid uh, vaniloid receptors. Um, these channels are activated by the vaniloid uh, class. So, what is the vanil uh, vaniloid uh, uh, class, which can be can be known as the um, the cosm the co ca cap uh, cap uh, p kin, uh, spices. So, anything spicy food. So, this uh, this activates it. Vaniloid class and the thermal receptors in the oral face area. Well, that's gonna, of course, like I said, there's vaniloid uh, receptors which are gonna be at above 40 degrees, and there's gonna be cold menthol which is gonna be between 8 and 28. The channels can, do, can be opened by uh, not only by thermal energy, but they can also be opened by a chemical stimulus as well. Uh, the trans, transduction of the warm temperature, sorry, transductions and cold temperatures. That's what I wanted to say. So, cold uh, t t transduction of the of cold temperature can be done can be done via um. Then it can be done. Uh, this is going to be. This is going to involve a. a it can be done via, via TRP channel, which is going to be known as a TRP M8 channel. Like I said, the mental channel. Um, this is going to be uh, a TR8, uh, which are open for compounds like mental, which have a cold sensation. Um, open for compounds like mental. Which got a cold sensation. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to perception of cold and warmth. 
Perception of cold and warm can be done via two uh, elements have a sense of warm and the cold at different gradations. It, it is believed that three receptors are responsible for sensation. So, I mean, the, there are going to be four receptors the sensation uh, are involved for, um, for cold and warm. These will include the following. Uh, these will include the following. So, the cold and uh, pain receptors. Uh, the cold and pain receptors, and we have a cold receptors which have a very fast speed, well, in fact, 20 meters per second. I think that's the perception rate. Warm receptors a bit slower. I mean, now a bit slower, quite a bit slower. Uh, 0.4 meters to per second. And now we have warm heat pain receptors. Receptors, perfect. And uh, the cold and warm receptors are located uh, immediately uh, under the skin at discrete separated uh, separated spots. In the most in most areas of the body, there is there are ten, three to ten times as many cold uh, spots as warm spots, and the uh, number of different areas of body uh, body varies from fifteen to twenty five cold spots. So. Um, they're gonna be basically in, in our body. There's gonna be not that I mentioned. This is gonna be thirty, uh, thirty. There's gonna be three to ten uh, times as much uh, as many cold spots uh, to uh, warm spots uh, in the lips. I believe so. Uh, and it's gonna be different from by different parts of the body. So in the in fifteen to twenty times. Uh, cold, uh, cold spots uh, per centimeter in the lips, uh, three to five in the um, fingers, I believe. So three to five Whew, cold spots in the fingers per centimeter, of course. And most importantly, I want to mention that there's one cold spot. Per centimeter in the trunk and on the surface of the of the trunk. Okay, so now in 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 the very cold region, the only cold fibers are stimulated if the skin it becomes even colder. So that so that it, it nearly freezes or or actually does freeze. So, uh, um, as the temperature rises, so in a very cold region, region, uh, uh, only, uh, cold, cold pain fibers are stimulated, are stimulated if the skin becomes even colder it freezes or actually it, it, it does uh, does freeze uh, these fibers can't be stimulated so now uh, as, as the temperature it uh, it rises to uh, ten to fifteen Celsius. Um, as the temperature rises, the cold pain they, they're gonna cease. Cold pain and cold pain impulses they're gonna cease, but uh, cold receptors begin. To be stimulated, we're gonna be begin to stimulate it, reaching peak stimulation. They're gonna reach peak stimulation, but uh, peak stimulation at about 24 degrees and fading out above 40 degrees. So that's about it for the. 
but the core wheels are going to be stimulated and they reach a peak at 24 and they are stimulated at 40 anything above uh, above 30 is one receptors and they kind of fade out above uh, 49 degrees so you can see there's a kind of overlap so uh, if there's very cold regions the body the skin uh, does the body uh, even colder and it does freeze after 10 to 15 is going to be cold pain receptors are going to cease but uh, the cold cold receptors to begin to stimulate and they move on all the way to 40 degrees they move on to they are stimulated peak stimulation is 24 and they fade out around at a 40 and over here we can see the warm receptors they are mainly between the temperatures 30 to 49 and 45 is like 30, 40, 45 the heat pain fibers are stimulated and uh, paradoxically cold fibers are stimulated again possibly because of damage of cold and means uh, caused by excessive heat okay yeah um, and then some of the cold uh, fibers begin to be stimulated um, again because of damage of cold endings caused by excessive so even uh, under very hard uh, the cold endings can get damaged the cold fibers are can be stimulated because of the excess heat so that's really really scary when especially if in conditions where it's very hot um how do re receptors react the cold and warm receptors they are stimulated, stimulated by changes in their metabolic rates. Metabolic rates. They, they are going to be because the temperature, temperature it um, it changes the the rate of intracellular chemical reactions more than two times for each 10 degrees change in other words basically the thermal direction probably results not from direct physical effects of heat or cold on the nerve endings but from chemical stimulation as the endings are modified as modified by temperature uh, so the th thermal thermal uh, detection uh, uh, results from not from direct effects of heat or cold on nerve endings but from chemical stimulation of endings modified temperature so we can see that the cold and warm they can they are depending on the metabolic activities because they want to maintain the inter intracellular uh, rates and uh, in other words the thermal detection uh, probably results in a physical effect of the, the heat and cold nerve endings but from uh, chemical stimulation of the endings um, as modified by temperature so they can be chemical be, be, be stimulated the stimulation of the endings which can be modified by temperature and uh, the thermal detection probably results from uh, dark physical effects of heat and cold on earth but the chemical it is, it is as uh, chemical stimulation is from modified at temperature whereas Temperature pressure itself is the one that is physically added. So I'll talk about how receptors really act, really adapt in my next video. Thank you for watching this video.